Hummus is one of those ingredients that can be used in so many different things or enjoyed on its own. So in this one, I'm gonna run you through the easy steps it takes to make this deliciously smooth hummus. Please sit back, relax, and enjoy. All right guys, to get this started, here is one cup or 210 grams of raw and dried chickpeas, to which we're going to add into a medium to large saucepan along with three cups or 750 milliliters of cold water and place a lid onto the saucepan and allow this to sit for 24 hours to rehydrate the chickpeas. 24 hours later, we can then remove the lid and our chickpeas are now rehydrated and doubled or nearly tripled in size, which is exactly what we want. So that means we can make our way over to the kitchen sink and drain these off for a sieve. The next step is to give the chickpeas a rinse under some cold water for 10 to 15 seconds just to wash off any impurities that may have been lingering and also sometimes they can become a little slimy depending on where you get your chickpeas from. Anyway, once that's done we can then turn the water off giving these a good shake and we can then tip them into the same saucepan which I recommend giving a clean before you do so. Fill the saucepan up with cold water bringing it to a level that's roughly 5 inches above the chickpeas and the reason for cold water is to allow these to all reach the same temperature at the same time, which will then accurately cook them. Once that's done, transfer the saucepan over to the largest burner on our stovetop, placing it onto a high heat before adding in one teaspoon or five grams of sea salt flakes for a bit of seasoning and bring this to a boil. Once at a boil, allow it to continue to do so for an hour and a half to an hour and 45 minutes or until the chickpeas are completely cooked through and really soft, topping up the water if it does happen to evaporate. Okay, so this has now been an hour and a half and the chickpeas are extremely soft, which is exactly what we want. And that means we can then remove the saucepan from the stovetop and immediately pour the chickpeas into a colander or sieve to drain. But please be careful of the upcoming steam as that really does do some damage. Give the colander or sieve a quick shake to drain off any excess water and allow the chickpeas to completely cool down and you can leave them out to cool or you can put them into a bowl and chuck them in the fridge. It's up to you. Now in the meantime, weigh out half a teaspoon or one gram of whole cumin seeds and place a small skillet onto your stovetop and add in the seeds. Place the pan onto a medium high heat and toast the cumin for one and a half minutes or until very lightly golden brown. This is going to greatly enhance the flavor of the cumin, giving us a more potent aromatic flavor. Also whilst doing this, keep the seeds moving so they consistently toast and not burn. One and a half minutes later and the seeds are very lightly golden and aromatic, we can then remove them from the stovetop, add the cumin into a spice grinder or mortar and pestle, securing the lid on tightly if you're using a spice grinder, and then turn this onto the most powerful setting and obliterate those seeds into a nice fine powder. Once that's done, remove the lid and barrel, and then that leaves us with a beautiful and aromatic cumin powder, which can then be popped aside for the time being. Moving on, grab one whole fresh lemon to which we can slice in half, and push onto a citrus juicer to extract the juice of both halves. If you don't have a citrus juicer, just squeeze it with your hands into a bowl, making sure not to include the seeds. This will then leave us with roughly one quarter of a cup or 60 milliliters of fresh lemon juice, which we can pop aside, and with the leftover lemon pieces, simply place them into a compost bin if you have one. Okay, so now to assemble the hummus. Start off by adding in a third of a cup or 75 grams of homemade tahini, which I made in my previous video, into a food processor or blender, along with the freshly squeezed lemon juice. We can then shut the lid up nice and tight, turn the machine onto the highest setting, and process this for 30 seconds to whip this up to create a smooth paste, and when making hummus, it's more beneficial to add and blend the ingredients separately to create a more fluffy and light texture. 30 seconds later, turn the machine off, pop open the lid, and this time add in one whole clove of minced garlic for a delicious tangy flavor, the freshly ground cumin for an amazingly earthy and warm spice, half a teaspoon or 2.5 grams of sea salt flakes for a little seasoning, and two and a half tablespoons or 50 milliliters of extra virgin olive oil, which is going to help this combine together, give the hummus a really nice subtle background flavor, as well as a smooth and silky texture. Once that's in, place the lid back on nice and tight, Turn this onto the highest setting and process again for another 30 seconds to combine and whip the ingredients so that they can all become friends. Now after 30 seconds we can turn the machine off, pop open the lid and this time we're going to add in those cooked chickpeas that are nice and cold to further the flavour friendship. Close the lid again, turn it back onto the highest setting and now process this for 2 minutes to create a smooth and whipped hummus. Also during this stage you will have to scrape down the sides to help everything incorporate and after a minute of processing, slowly pour in another two and a half tablespoons or 50 milliliters of extra virgin olive oil, or you can substitute it for cold water, and this is going to help the hummus whip up and become so delicious and smooth. Once that's all in, process this for a further one minute before we can then turn this off, remove the bowl from the base, 
and scrape out that delicious hummus onto a plate or into a bowl or container. The next step I like to do is give this a spread out using the back of a spoon to create little walls or waves, then drizzle over some more extra virgin olive oil which will get trapped in those waves and not only look really nice but add even more flavour. This can then get a really good sprinkle of smoky or sweet paprika for a beautiful contrast in colour and delicious flavour before we can then dip in our sticks of carrot, celery, cucumber, bread or whatever you'd like. Or in other words, we can then dig in. So that's it for this deliciously smooth hummus. This recipe right here makes one and a half cups worth and can easily be double, tripled and so on. And to store it, simply place it in the fridge in an airtight container or glass jar for up to five days, or you can place it in the freezer in an airtight container for up to six months. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button so my channel can be seen by more people and consider subscribing along with hitting that bell notification next to it so you never miss one I upload. Thanks for watching everyone, stay safe and enjoy.